this tube should separate from, yep, there we go, should separate like that. We went ahead and removed the uh, interior on the left hand side of the trunk where the antenna is and you can see back there nestled all by itself is the sliding roof motor assembly and that red cap that you see right there that is apparently the adjustment for the clutch mechanism now i have no idea if we have a loose clutch or if we have balled up old grease in the cable assembly or if we have missing teeth in the motor i don't know uh, any of those things could be a uh, possible cause of our issue according to the manual that little red cap comes off of there and uh, you can get in there and make an adjustment so that's the next thing i'm going to try all right that's the uh, red cover i pulled off of there you can see some spring-loaded plastic uh, areas in there where it kind of holds on to that shaft over there pretty this is a pretty substantial red cover i might add it's pretty heavy duty actually but i just slipped a, a screwdriver underneath it and just eased it off and the shaft is back in there let's see pretty hard to see really here on camera but it's uh it's right there it looks like you've got a a center shaft, something similar to what you have on a, a shock absorber with a flat on the top of it. And then there's a nut right there. That nut is 17. I'm assuming the nut is the adjustment for the clutch, although the manual isn't quite clear. So I'm going to study up on that for another few moments, and then we'll uh, dive into it. All right, we got the uh, camera in the trunk there. And we're going to go ahead and uh, do a little test. You guys are going to be looking at the can at the uh, motor for me and uh, going to see what happens with this thing. You're going to tell me whether or not it's going to move or not when I press this button, okay? Just a little experimentation here. Glow plugs. All right, there we go. The uh, travel on this thing is set to about, I don't know, midway maybe? And uh, let's uh, try to move it in the closed direction towards the front of the car. So let's see. Nope, that's the wrong way. Okay, now I'm moving towards the front of the car, closing it. All right, got a little bit of resistance. And let's see. All right, now I can see the cable. That's all the way out. Now let's go back. All right. Now it's starting to stop. It's not even a quarter of a way open, really. And I'm having to put a lot of holding the button down and pulling, putting a lot of resistance on it. And uh, we're going to take a look at this video after and see what in the world is going on with this thing. Whether or not that uh, clutch is turning or not. All right, now I'm going to go back towards the front of the car. There's a certain area where it moves pretty good. And a certain area where, where it just bogs down and, and it starts right there. So... Here it's moving good. I'm going back, that was back towards the front. And now we're gonna open it again and I'll tell you when it starts to bog down. All right, go. Now, that's when it's bogging down right now and I'm, I'm pressing on it to make it go back further but not making a whole lot of progress. All right, let's shut her down and take a look at that video and see what it looked like. All right, a little closer examination of this plastic cover. I think I spoke too soon when I said it was robustly made. You can see that it's cracked all the way around the uh, the hat part, I guess you might call it. I can sort of move that and open that crack up. And it's reinforced with metal down in there. You can see little bits of the, uh, the metal around the outside and that one crack goes down through there as well so i'm assuming i don't know why that's cracked but uh, this goes over the clutch mechanism the torque of the system is tested using this red cap it's a 21 millimeter and uh, when you want to test it you have someone in the back with a uh, 
either a digital or analog uh, torque wrench and someone tries to move the sliding roof and they hold this thing in place and then you record the amount of torque that um, and then you, you induce slippage I think and uh, you record the amount of torque and this the uh, service manual uh, specifies that uh, that torque rating all right i've come to the conclusion that i need to remove the sliding roof motor uh, and bracket assembly so according to the service manual we're going to press the button and make the the, uh, the cable mechanism move forward uh, far enough to where that cable comes out of that motor. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is uh, press the button inside the car until I feel the cable, you know, come loose. In other words, if it's still connected to the motor, I should be able to, I shouldn't be able to pull on it, right? But at some point, as I keep pressing the button and it keeps unwinding the cable, at some point I should be able to, you know, pull on it and it comes freely so at that point I'll stop and then I can come in here and and remove this bolt here and there's a bolt right there hiding and that should remove that should disconnect the bracket holding the motor to the frame here and you should be able to pull this out of here um, there's a I guess this is a water drainage tube if I had to take a stab at what that is I'm probably going to have to end up removing that electric antenna as well. And there's a wiring harness somewhere that makes this uh, antenna move. I don't know which one of these it is. I think it's that one right there, as a matter of fact. So I have to disconnect that as well. So, all right, let's get busy and uh, get some stuff done. All right, let's go ahead and uh, push the button to close the sunroof, which should unwind or let out some of that cable whoops did it again <laughs> come on you can do it goodness gracious you can't even do that properly come on there we go now i got that so i can't pull it i'm assuming at some point there's a little bushing right there too I guess that keeps the cable centered in the tube. So if we... Boy, what was that noise? It went clunk! I can't pull it. Huh, let me see if I can go back. Yeah, I can go back. Okay, I can't go any farther. I hear it going... You know, it's, it's, it's some gears are stripped or something. I have no idea what that noise is. Let me go back to the trunk and figure that out. All right, so uh, that last sound you heard, uh, I believe was the cable coming out of the uh, motor assembly because I, uh, shortly thereafter, I pressed the button again and just sort of held onto it to keep it from uh, going back in there. When I held some outward pressure on it and I tried to do the, you know, when I tried to make the cable go back into the uh, tube it wouldn't go but when i pressed inward on the cable into the tube it would go if, if you catch my meaning so i believe we have achieved the step in the book and that the cable should be released from the motor now so that is pure guesswork keep that in mind the next step is to remove those two bolts those are 10 millimeter all right let's go ahead and uh Disconnect this wiring harness. Looks like we've got a metal clip over it. All right, that was easy. I'm assuming that's the wiring harness for the, for the motor. Uh, I don't know what else it would be. It certainly isn't the wiring harness for the antenna. So, all right, let's go ahead and loosen these uh, two bolts here yeah we're there we go not loosen but you know remove hmm. there we go so get to uh, 
get this little metal tube out of that little bracket there. I'm, again, I'm assuming that is a drain. Yeah, yeah. So apparently the tube is in the motor in like a a little sliding trough or something. It's in the book, but <laughs> you can't really see it. And that's the reason why you have to move the cable until it goes out of that thing. So, let's see. Yeah, it's uh, that tube. That's a substantial tube. How does that tube come out of there? So I'm going by feel, look, back in there, you know? All right, so there's, what is that? I may have to go look at the book some more. Okay, back to the drawing board. All right, so that cable's not coming out of there, and it's got to come out of there in order to get this motor out of the car. So we've got to disassemble the drive gears, as noted in the service manual. So we've got to disconnect this. We've got to unscrew this, uh, this large hex nut here. And uh, you hold the center shaft steady with a... Uh, what is that? Nine millimeter is what I have. Is it nine? No, it's six. <laughs> it was upside down. And guess who else is upside down? All right, we're starting to loosen up here. Let's see, there we go. Now we're supposed to take this thing off. This, uh, hex nut here and then we're going to take the back off of the drive gear assembly and then we're going to remove the large worm gear inside the gearbox of this motor I usually pick the hard jobs for videos all the easy stuff I do myself off camera <laughs> that's the way it seems anyway all right stand by I'm gonna look up the next step all right, next step is to remove the three eight millimeter bolts on the back side of the motor that cover up the gearbox. All right, got a smaller quarter inch drive socket. Come on, how hard is it? One possibility is they're not even tight. Ha, huh. let's see what we have here. They're not, they're not even tight. That one's not. Wouldn't that be something if the gearbox cover was just loose and it was letting the worm gears flop around and and there. All right, there's one. I wonder if the other ones. There's two more. Let's see. No, that one's tight. That one's on the bottom. Gee whiz. The uh, the nut head is a little shallow so it kind of slips off somewhat readily well they're not on there with much torque that's for sure i mean i barely was able to get the wrench on there and break it loose i mean literally inch pounds maybe you know i don't know nothing hardly just barely enough to prevent me from doing it with my bare hand in an awkward position let me see if i can Use my other hand and get in there this way. One more, you can do it. It'd be kind of nice if I could get that one with the. There we go. All right, see, they just barely. It just didn't take anything to break it loose. All right, there we go. Now, the cover should just come off. In my mind. Yep, there we go. There's your cover off of your gearbox on your. That's what that looks like. How about that? All right, so there's your uh, worm gear. And uh, after you get that back cover off, you just push on this and it slides out of the assembly. Not too hard. Uh, 
but I, I'll leave it. I'll the part about me not fig figuring that out for about 10 minutes. I'll just leave that out of the video. Thank goodness for editing. Okay. This tube should separate from, yep, there we go. Should separate like that. And uh, there you go. There's your pesky assembly. Holy cow. So where's the, uh, that's the worm gear. Well, I tell you what, I'm done for the day. I'm going to go ahead and take this worm gear and this motor over the workbench and give it a quick check. And, uh, but I think I'll save that for tomorrow. Right now, I'm going to go edit some video. And uh, I think we'll call this part two removal of the uh, sliding roof motor. Uh, with all the rigmarole I went through, I think <laughs> this will make a fairly lengthy video, just getting this stupid thing out of the car. All right, folks, that's all for now. Appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to see another video, well, you just stick around, because I'm sure there's going to be lots more. You guys take it easy.